to see light at the end of the tunnel. Well, we hope so anyway. Time to take apart the valve body and give it a good cleaning. Hopefully there won't be too much gunk or crud inside of it, so... We'll take it from there and we'll see what happens. Away we go. More fun. While this monstrosity seemed to separate okay, one of the gaskets came completely off. These are priming and check valves over here inside the valve body, so you have to take note of where those go. Don't lose them, obviously. And um, the other separator gasket more or less came loose as well, too, without too much fuss. A little bit of a blade scrape will get the rest of this off, okay, but thank goodness it's not going to be literally welded on there like I've seen some of these things, so. Um, Anyway, we'll carry on over here. Doesn't look too bad. Just a bit of sludge over here from stuff. I'm not too sure what that's from, but uh, it just again, like I said, I have my suspicions of what happened to this transmission. It was had some water in it at one point of its life. We'll closer take a closer examination of these parts. But it looks like there might actually be reverse clutch material from that clutch plate that I saw that was deteriorated. We'll take it from there. We'll see what'll happen. Well, this side is fighting me every inch of the way, it seems, and putting off these baked-on gaskets is not particularly fun. If you have a cleaning machine that they can boil the stuff off on, and that's all, that, that's much better then. That's so why we have to pick, pick, pick away at it very carefully without gouging. Sometimes you're just a few little bit. way. Very careful with a pulling motion. Like straight and flat almost. That gives you a lot of bite pulling the stuff off when it's baked on. Sometimes it's just scraping off and chipping off little bits and pieces. It just takes patience. Well, like I said, one of the gaskets came off more or less in one piece, the upper valve body, or the section that's closest to the um, rotating parts of the transmission. Unfortunately, the bottom one that attaches to the uh, larger valve body plate on the bottom was a total fail, getting it off in one piece, but um, at least I'll be able to match up with the pattern of which one of the two new lower um, gaskets is a proper one to want the valve body. Now I'll just start cleaning this thing up over here and uh, we'll see what fun we find, but I don't expect anything major. It's just, like I said, I just believe that's, the, that's debris from the reverse clutch. That's, that's, that's all it really looks like. It's not even... A, Metallic, it's just breaking apart my hands, so it's nothing metal, so that's what it has to be. Generally, hard parts in um, stock horsepower application cars, the power glide stand up very well. It's only when you get into crazy high horsepower things that input shafts and other parts like that have to be replaced with much improved modern parts. But on we go with the cleanup process. The separator plate all cleaned up, but if you can see, there's like little spots of remaining gasket, like right about the center point of the, or where the camera's pointing right now. Little bits and pieces over here and touches of corrosion from like where I suspect there was dampness inside of this thing. So it'll be cleaned up a little bit more. Then we're gonna give it a quick, quick polish with some roughly 1500 grit sandpaper, just to make sure that we don't have any chance of any crushed kind of least when we put on the new gaskets even though they do compress a little bit we never want to take any chances with this sort of stuff so we're going to make sure it's absolutely clean everything just little steps to count to keep you from having problems when you start these things up and pump them into drive for the first time you only need this thing to shift one two one two one two but in all honesty it seems to be a pretty complex valve body for just two shifts it's amazing the turbo 350 actually looks well in some ways well, less complicated, maybe a couple more valves, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of passages in this thing for a two-speed transmission, I'll tell you. So the separator plate's been sanded. Got it pretty clean, and that also shows you up just tiny little imperfections that you still might have with old gasket material that's left. So you take off just enough just to leave enough of a pattern so you can see the valve body shape, the two sides, but enough to clean it up a little bit. You can also see remains of old gaskets too once you do the bit of sanding, you see? You have one little spot over there. And there's like a couple little spots over here that we'll take care of. Let's just give it a nice smooth surface even. So that way when you bolt it together, nothing is warped, nothing is leaking on it or anything like that. So there you go. So 
So the valve body looked pretty clean before we took it apart, didn't it? There was even some nice bright red oil sitting that dripped out of it. Amazing what comes out when you start to spray it with a little bit of cleaner. It's totally black down there with sludge and dirt. You never want to just assume and put together a transmission because something might look good on the outside. You never know what you're stuck with on the inside of parts. That's why intricacy and attention to detail is very important on these things. I can't overemphasize this enough. So we have the components basically cleaned. They'll get a quick final spraying right before they go back together, make sure no dust or anything got into them, but all the valves are moving smoothly and free, and that's that mess that we have in there. That's what's also the valve body, all the spilt and dirt. Yes, even a tub of water it looks like, like I said. Somehow, somewhere, water got into this thing, a little bit of condensation, who knows, whatever. But who cares now, because it's all gone, it's all cleaned up and everything. And with this said, it's just a matter of putting the uh, low servo back in, the um, valve body back together, and of course all the shifter shaft and kick down mechanisms. And then this power glide project will be done. We'll be catching up with you soon on that. Thank you for watching. Continuing with the power glide adventures, we're going to put the low servo in for the low band. As you can see, there's a new steel ceiling ring that I installed onto the piston assembly. Transmission oil is there. It's Vaseline over here just to make sure again it has a good fighting chance when it's put together. Point right in. You know what fits properly. Was it okay? Now we can put in the return spring. We have a slight cushion spring over there for the apply. You can see over there. And there are different specs for those and of course a return spring when, it, when the band has to release when it kicks into higher drive. Always be careful putting the mixer. You don't want to pinch and the pinching your seal or anything like that or, or catching that cast iron ring because it could break very easily. Okay. Now we'll put the new seal on for the uh, cover, for the servo cover itself. And there is only one way this piece can go on obviously. Thankfully it's indexed for klutzes like me. Put some more of that lube onto it, Vaseline stuff. All over the place with the camera. Been a long week. And all the nuts and bolts were categorized and put in their proper places so nothing gets mixed up. I'll have to put the set the camera down for a minute while we get that cover on. We'll be back. Okay, a little bit noisy here because I have the homemade um, pump running over there. Of course, our ever important pressure checks. This one's pretty easy. Just got to worry about three elements. We've already tested the back one, uh, which is the reverse. In an earlier test, we know that works. Now for the servo. That works perfectly fine for low gear. And if you really can't, maybe you won't hear it on the camera, but there's an audible pump. I can hear it. There you go. Pump. I'll let this thing build up a bit of pressure, and then we'll try the, um, the high clutch. You'll hear it with the pump turned off over here. I don't need pressure there, but I could, but even like that, I could still um, hear that piston moving back and forth. So we know we have the elements working properly in the transmission, which will be 
good for our health. Well, at least we'll know if anything is wrong. It'll be strictly the end of our body problem if anything doesn't quite work out right. But we've been taking a lot of time and care and effort and energy to make sure that it does. So just one more little step done. Air pressure checks, always important. Just a bit of wiggling over here. We got the struts that hold our band in, of course, and um, your adjustment rod. And this is just about the preliminary adjustment that this would need to be proper. We'll give it a final check once it's all said and done. But pretty much so. Here we go. Doesn't need too much, really. Just as long as it's has enough free play to get oil kicked around there, but of course, not so much play. And you always would hear the expression when a transmission would slip in the olden days, because the bands needed adjustment. These were prime examples. Band adjustment is very, very critical because you don't want to have it um, flare or race when it's shifting between low and drive. And also, you don't want the band to be too tight that it's not going to get enough oil being splashed onto it when it's in uh, the high position because then you'll burn it out pretty quick. So. It's pretty critical the adjustment to this, but this is just about, well, right on for what we would need for play. Between 3 16 and a quarter inch of play, like, not even, like I'd say pretty much 3 16 but that's just about right on about what we need in this thing for it to work properly. So, now we'll get on to getting the valve body put back together. Hooray, finally, valve body reassembly. Something like this you want to try to reassemble, especially if it's going back into a car pretty quick and you don't have to worry about dampness, which hopefully this unit won't have to worry about anymore. You want to try to assemble everything together dry. That way you don't have any chance to pick up any grit or dirt or anything like that on any of the parts. This is about as dry as I can honestly get it, being I'm in a home setting and not a controlled shop or anything like that. But um, we will do that. Just a quick note. Kit came with four gaskets. Y4 gaskets, power glides, the aluminum case ones from 1963 when I believe they brought them out up until 1966 they had the rear pump on them uh, which meant the car could be push started etc and once the car was rolling on its own power the rear pump would be, con uh, would be supplying the pressure that the transmission would need. After 1966 they got rid of the rear pump and um, Subsequently, you notice we have the gaskets over here. You can see the difference. There's only one hole. There's only one hole over here versus the two holes over here. So it's pretty easy if you're not careful or paying attention to mix up your gaskets. So you, so you want to be very careful to try to match things up. And that's why it's always nice to try to get the gaskets off intact or even if they're stuck to the plate, let's say, just see what type of gasket you have so you don't make any mistakes. So we'll get together and we'll start getting this thing back together over here in a sequence and uh, we'll, well actually we'll do it just over here right now Cast it on like that make sure it's lined up okay because you don't want to pinch anything if you have dowels you can always like, use like little dowels but already I see a little bit of a problem a hound fur but that's it okay <clears throat> We don't want hound furs or any sort of stuff like that around. Let's slide it up nice. Get in a home setting in a basement, you gotta make do with what you have. Now we can put the separator plate on. Again, making sure it's clean. This part we're gonna flip upside down onto the other piece of valve body because we have our two valves over here that control priming and pressure for the transmission so these I guess were in place of check balls that were introduced into later models of transmissions okay this goes up in here like that we're just making a sandwich basically that's all all these bits and pieces Set the camera down for a second. Bring your both hands on the screen.
double checking again. Slight difference here once again over here. Yep. So that goes like that. This goes over here like that. Interesting. Very interesting. Any confusion here? A triple check has revealed something. Be back in a second to explain. Okay, it just turned out to be the assembly sequence. Again, I've said before, I'm dyslexic, so sometimes I mix things up as I see them. Be it in writing or when I'm, sometimes when I'm just looking at things. Fortunately, it hasn't spread to um, my driving abilities. I never mixed my lefts with my rights or any things like that, so it's all okay to go there. But, um, Anything is we got it figured out. That's all that counts in this in this whole sequence. We'll just get our manual valve knocked loose again over here because it's sort of slipped back in. A little screwdriver for that. Everything's patience on these things. Everything is patience. Because we don't want that thing getting stuck in there. There we go. Out. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Probably one of the longest parts of the project. And again, we have to make sure that these two valves, one way check valves are on properly, they're not pinched to the side or anything like that. You can feel their way in. Yep. They have springy motion to them, so they're good to go. Gasket is staying aligned. More or less. There we go. Up, there we go. On. Right. For our next gasket in the sequence. back up and over. Yeah, I should have made some dowels for this, I know. But we're doing okay. Once again, one bolt, I'll be able to pivot everything around that we need. Pretty much a line there. It's pretty much aligned. And there we go. Put back together, it looks like. We'll be, we'll be back in a little bit. If I've ever seen such a mess of parts needed for a simple PRNDL or Prendel shift assembly kick-down assembly and parking assembly as I've ever seen in a transmission like this one springy thingies all sorts of stuff we gotta get this to look like this over here and put it into that well let's get started and have some fun a crazy mess this thing is over here Got it together. Picture really didn't show you too well just exactly how that little spring in there fit, so it took a little bit of turning it upside down, spinning it around, and figuring where it fit into a slot inside the parking hall over here to give a spring action. But finally got it over here. This might need just a touch of adjustment. That's for your kick down this one over here. Goes against the valve and the transmission's valve body. 
And of course you have your manual lever, so there we go, we're locking the park there. You can see the planetary, the uh, ring gears and turning. It's turning. This one fits into park. Of course now it's going to cost me fits.